And we generate a ton of leads that way. So the big question is, what are the top agents doing to absolutely crush it in real estate, grow their teams and add more transactions year over year while so many struggle? If you ever thought about this, you're not alone. No one has been able to get the answers until now. We spent the last few years helping agents sell billions in real estate, rubbing shoulders with top producers, which got us thinking. How can we expose more people to these insights to help raise the standard in the whole real estate industry? We then realized that we could help bridge the gap by getting secrets from the best of the best so that you can succeed. My name is Andrew Dunn. And my name is Peter Michael. Welcome to Elite Agent Secrets. Are you on your personal page, are you adding people in your like local area who might be interested by selling a home or are you just keeping it friends, family and leaving all posts public? You know, are you generating, I guess this could actually roll into, I know your other topic, so I'm not sure if this isn't a nice caveat onto that, but it's like, are you generating leads? Is that how you're generating a lot of volume um, organically for free or is that, that a completely separate thing? <laughs> so I, I don't know if, um, if this is common in, in the Florida market or anything, but we have a lot of local like buy sell trading groups. Yep, big. And- they're huge. I think they're huge everywhere because I remember in Philly, it's like every other group is buy sell, take my shit for free, or you know, donate here, donate there. So yes, everywhere. Yes. So I mean, we use a ton of those. Um, I have a Facebook group specific to properties and and rent to own and things like that. So. We and then I also utilize marketplace, like where you can actually post a specific item for sale to everyone. Um, all of our listings go there, and we generate a ton of leads that way. So there, you know, it could we could get forty email addresses in a day. Are they all going to pan out? Not necessarily. Wow. Um, but then the whole team can be following up with these leads. We market to renters a lot, which. I don't think a lot of agents are sort of tapping that market, which is where I got a ton of business in the beginning. And as far as the sphere goes, you know, anything, anything that's interactive. So I don't want to make my personal page all business. That's going to get a little bit boring. Um, But something as simple as post a picture of your dog. Like I want to, I want to see your pets. Like here's what my dog's doing today. You You'll get, you know, if you have a thousand, two thousand Facebook friends, you'll get maybe even a few hundred comments on that. People love sharing their pets, their children, um, and it it doesn't keep it so, you know, everything they post is real estate related. If that makes sense. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I mean, when it comes to posting and sharing, people want to feel like they can relate to you. They don't want to feel like you're some kind of awkward affair is, you know, it's important that people go actually, like I can see myself in that person. They're decent people. They, they are like me. People are attracted to similarity. Like it makes us feel good as just, this is just human beings. It's just psychology. Like we're attracted to people who are similar to us. That's just the way the world works. So when you're doing the posting, by the way, this is great. We, I haven't heard about people doing the marketplace stuff for a long time, really. Um, I know when it first came out, I swear this was massive. I'm not, I'm not saying loads of people did it, but I know a few people who did it with like extreme effectiveness because there was you could just do tons of it. I think you could also do multiple of the same house when now I'm not sure if you can. And they would literally have like 20 go out and they'd all be the exact same thing and they'd kind of just blow up everyone's feed with this property. Yeah. But are you... It's, that's it's crazy. It's so hard to manage that some of it... Because I, I probably post some stuff in there that maybe would normally be removed because it's for the rent-to-own program or something, but it's... it's You're getting away with it. You're making money. This yeah. is what it's all right. So you're joining the groups... You're posting your listings, you're doing all that stuff. You're adding the people as friends uh, for the people that engage as well. Is that how you're building your profiles and you're asking them to like your page? Is that how kind of how that process works as well or not? Yeah, a lot of the time, I usually, so in the in the groups, I try to post from the business page. So they usually end yeah. up doing that. So yeah. I don't yeah. always add them. Sometimes they add me. Um, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, that just, that depends on the situation. 
Got it. Yeah, because it's just so people listening, it's like, this is how you can grow your profile. I think a lot of people as well, like you said, it's nice that you're posting from a personal business page. So you've just made one that looks like you because a lot of people I know for sure, I was in this position for a long time where it's like, I don't want my personal, my actual personal Facebook page to be about business. You know, a lot of people like myself have probably been on it for, you know, what close to a decade, you know, and it's like, it's all about friends, family and stuff. And there's that resistance. They're like, I don't want to mix. They're also worried about judgment. This is another big thing. It's like all the people, my friends and family, if I just start posting about stuff, trying to sell stuff, they feel like they're going to get judged and people will go against them. It's kind of a bizarre thing, but I definitely felt this when I started and what tends to happen is you do get a few of those comments, but what happens is like they dissipate almost instantaneously. It ha- tends to happen like once or twice. And this was my experience. And then it's never happened since because it's like, they now just understand that like, this is you doing business and this is how you're going to do it. And it's like, it's because at first it's different, right? It's just different. You haven't it's done a that. Shocker. It's a shock. Like, mm, oh my God. Yeah. And like, I just to Andrew and Carly. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, what happened to him? They've changed, and it's like, no, we're just just hustling our fucking face off, man, to to get after it. I mean, there's never been a better time in history, in my opinion, to make a shitload of money and genuinely set yourself up for the rest of your life and your family's life. Like, you can make a lot of money in these markets, and, you know, some of these things are kind of going to be bitter pills for some people. I'm not saying this is the only way, but what we're doing here is, like, this is the way you've done it, which is great. The other thing is, it's free right? Which is going to appeal to a lot of people where it's like, I don't want to pay. And it's like, okay, it's a bit slower, you know, when you don't tend to pay and it's a bit more work, you pay with time, not necessarily money, right? Which is how, which is how you've been doing it. And that's, you know, it's great to understand that. Is, is there any other, from the kind of cost-free social media side that I know you wanted to talk about, is there any other strategies that encompass in that apart from the marketplace and the Facebook groups? Yeah, really just, again, authenticity. I think it, social media can also be a slower game, right? So I I graduated high school, for instance, in 2010. Um, there's a member of my team that is, you know, 25. And I, I tell her all the time, you know, what I was posting a few years ago. And it's not overnight. So you're not going to post, um, you know, I saved X amount of dollars by owning my home last year versus renting, but it is going to plant a seed. So there's a lot of people I haven't seen in 10, 15 years that will reach out to me and refer business or I'm listing their parents' house or they, um, you know, they're looking to buy or sell or they have questions about investing. So it can be a slow game. But this, the member of my team that I'm talking about was licensed in the spring of this year and just out of nowhere had a couple weeks of three or four people reach out that she had known from over the years. So um, I think sharing those stories are important. They resonate with people. You know, it's not, hey, I sold this $500,000 house. It's, hey, I sold this house to this family. They're, you know, they got a great deal on it. They're going to, you know, whatever story you can tell that someone can relate to. I think it's a top of mind thing. Or uh, like. One of the things I think about, it's it could be, for example, hey, I saw this, this house to this amazing family, and they just had this phenomenal story. They were kind of immigrants. They came over to the country with nothing. And in the last 10 years, they've gone from not having a, like a dollar in their pocket, and I've just sold them a $500,000 home. And they mm-hmm. did this all through hard work, like the American hashtag, the American dream is still alive type thing. It's kind of all that stuff where people are like, holy shit, it's amazing. And it's inspiring. It is like, listen, we all get off on that stuff. And it's true, by the way, the American dream definitely is still alive. I would say Peter's encompasses the American dream, in my opinion. I was going to say, I'm living it, baby. Come on, man. More than anyone. I can't wait to chase the American dream. Um, here he is. There you go. Here we Chase. go. Come We're going to dive into that story. We'll save it for another podcast. No, but, but, but that's amazing. I love how you're, you're defining you know, social media being a slow game because there's nothing slow about about going from 30 to 60 in less than 12 months. <laughs> Let's just be like super clear about it, right? Okay. But the other thing is uh, because it's a slow and steady and you know it, you recognize it, you are also aware of the compounding effect that comes along with it. 
So when you're patient enough to do something for so long, not expecting an outcome immediately, I think, Carly, that's what sets you apart. The, the, the patience and the relentlessness of following through, because that tells me that when it comes to actually working with your clients as well, that's probably how you run your business. That's probably how you run your team, right? That's how you run your day-to-day stuff. So Follow you're... Everything. Every, I mean, if you have one conversation with someone, let's say marketplace, they probably reach out to like six people. Some of them are not going to respond. Uh, you how, know, do you, how do you set yourself apart from the other six that, that they spoke to? You know, you, you can't win them all. Uh, but generally, you know, let's say they respond to an ad. And instead of initiating a huge conversation at first, I'll say, I would love to send you some information. Can you shoot me over your email and your phone number? And a lot of them do. And so let's say they're responding to one of our rent to own ads. So I have a specific, um, you know, campaign directed toward that. I'll enter their information. They are going to get, and here's some things that I've been doing that have been really, really helping. So I think CRMs and campaigns, they can feel a little bit canned at times. And, you know, people can sometimes tell when you're not sending them a email. So we've incorporated video. So they're going to get an email um, with a, with a survey. So I'm immediately making it about them. You know, what can we do for you? What would you like? Tell me about your dream house. And here's a little bit of information on the program. And they're also getting a text message with a link to the application and a video from me. And it says, Hi, I'm Carly. I've helped X amount of people. So it immediately, I think, creates trust. They're not saying, Oh, who's this internet person? Oh, she's a local agent. They can look me up. They can see that this is my cell phone number. Um, that's been extremely effective. Love it. Do you use a specific CRM to execute that strategy? I do. I have and I love KV Core. Love it. Love yeah. it. Love it. I still need to set mine up. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. I mean, is a, I know you're doing it just for other listeners. We we actually, you well, I say we use it. We haven't used it yet because we've got a million things going on. But there's this phenomenal app. It's called Bonjoro. I'm not sure if you heard of it. But it basically does, it's an app on your phone. And what happens is you link it up to your lead source. So a lead comes in and it'll go, hey, Carly, you know, Peter's just filled out whatever, whatever it is. And then the whole point of the app is it's customized videos. So you get the application. It comes in. You can then film a video. Hey, Peter, just got your application. It looks amazing. You want to do X, Y, Z. I just wanted to send you a quick video. Um, I'll be reaching out to you in X, Y, Z, right? And it's, it's that whole personalized video at scale where it's like it comes in it's on your phone you hit a whole button you then you fire it off and click send and it does it all inside of one app and again like you said conversion rates and like personability and stuff goes it just skyrockets up especially if they are you know hey peter it's carly just got your application you know i'm going to be reaching out i just want to send you this quick message and about jump into a meeting like you know but you are on my radar i'll speak to you in about an hour and it's like people see it and they're like whoa now, this is crazy. And it's like, you instantly stand out, like instantly, like, okay, compared to the other five in your example that have just gone and sent them a, like a shitty message. It's like, you are noticeably different now, you know? And and for your intake form, when it comes to personalization, like how personal do you get? Like what's, what are some of the questions that you're asking to you, to the person that's filling it out to get to know them a little bit more? So we have Google forms for, Pretty much everyone. Um, so they can schedule a call, but a lot of people are not, you know, you, I find we have a lot of different buyers out there. So some of them are like, call me, I want to make sure you're a real person, or I prefer the phone. And other ones are like, I would rather just fill out this questionnaire on your phone. So both options are there. Um, so if it's a, a general buyer, it's, you know, have you, have you looked into financing yet? How many bedrooms are you looking for? Do you need to be in a certain school district? Do you have pets? Things like that. Um, the the rent owner, renter, or seller ones are will be a little bit different. Um, but I feel like it it kind of reaches those questions that you know sometimes 
and I tell my agents this all the time, you want to bring up financing, but you don't want to bring up financing. So a lot of first time buyers, you ask them if they've spoken to a lender and they just shut down and they get scared for some reason. Um, So you kind of approach it in a different way. So would you like a recommendation for financing? Um, And that's rephrasing things has become something we are doing a lot recently, um, as opposed to saying something like, would you like a free CMA? We've changed it to, would you like an equity analysis? Instead of saying your house is worth this, this is how much money you have sitting in your home that you can use or have access to or sell or cash out. So it, it's a little bit of a, it, we just think about it a little bit differently. If, if we look at how we're doing that and just make it a little bit different and a little bit more related to where the client's thinking from. Do you find that conversation occurs a little bit differently from somebody who's coming from like your referral and sphere versus somebody who's coming like from marketplace and social media? Yeah. I mean, if someone's coming to you as a referral, um, someone they already know and trust has referred you to them. Yeah. So, And always thank your referrals. <laughs> yeah. They get a thank you in our newsletter and we also use send out cards. So they usually get a card and a little gift of some sort too. Oh, and by the way, if you're listening to this and you aren't making at least $100,000 per year in GCI and you're looking for a predictable system to get you there, then head over to go.eliteagentsecrets.com.